All right, so we've learned a bit now about the left and the right ventricular outflow tract views. They are very useful, but if my sonographers never once got me another left or right ventricular outflow tract view, but every time got me a perfect three vessel view, I would never complain. Okay, what is the three vessel view? Well, remember, the four chamber view is an axial scan through the lower thorax of the fetus. Now you simply uh, move the transducer until, slide it up toward the chin of the fetus, until it intersects the great vessels. And at that time, you will see the great vessels lined up from back to front, so from posterior to anterior, SVC, ascending aorta, and the pulmonary artery. Now, as we said before, when we see a great vessel branch, we're thinking pulmonary artery, and so one of the things we want to observe is a branch from the pulmonary artery. Now, frankly, I don't care if I observe the right pulmonary artery, the left pulmonary artery, or the ductus arteriosus going back to the descending thoracic aorta. I don't care which of those branches I observe. All three of them identify for me the pulmonary artery. Now, here we see a sonographic representation of the three vessel view, SVC, ascending aorta, pulmonary artery, and in this instance, the branch that I see is the ductus arteriosus going back to the descending thoracic aorta sitting just in front of the spine. So SVC, aorta, pulmonary artery, ductus arteriosus. What do I want to know about the three vessel view? I want to see that the artery that branches is on the end. That's, of course, the pulmonary artery. I want to see that the pulmonary artery sits in a more anterior position than does the aorta. I want the aorta and the pulmonary artery to be about the same size. And again, I will forewarn you, I will modify that criterion a little bit later in the lecture. And then finally, the right pulmonary artery travels behind and touches the aorta. But since that is gravy, and this observation tells me the same thing, I don't need to see that. I can see any branch as long as I've already made this observation. Now you will notice that that is everything that I wanted to know about the great arteries, with the exception that the anterior wall of the aorta was continuous with the interventricular septum. Again, we have to remember that the fetus can lie in multiple orientations. Here the fetus is in exactly the opposite orientation. So when we see the three vessels, the SVC again is the more posterior, the pulmonary artery is the more anterior, but they're lined up in the opposite direction. So let's analyze this. We have to decide what's anterior, that's it. We know because there's the spine. The vessel on the end is the one that branches. So there's my three vessels, and indeed, it is the vessel on the end that branches. That identifies my pulmonary artery. The pulmonary artery must be the most anterior vessel. So here's anterior, and indeed, the pulmonary artery is more anterior than either the SVC or the aorta. That means I'm calling the middle vessel the ascending aorta, and I want the aorta and the pulmonary artery to be about the same size. A normal three vessel view. Okay, so again, a three vessel view where I wanna see the branching artery must be on the end. It is, that's the pulmonary artery. And it must be more anterior. It is normal. Same thing here. Fetus in the opposite orientation. I find the branching artery. It's on the end. The branching artery is more anterior. 
Now, I do not focus on the SVC, just as in the heart. I focused more on the ventricles than I did the atria. In the uh, great arteries, I focus more on the pulmonary artery and aorta than I do on the SVC. But that doesn't mean there won't be times when the SVC simply looks too small or the SVC simply looks too big. In those situations, you want to pick up the dictaphone and recommend an echocardiogram. We'll talk a little bit more about it in a little while. Okay, so here I see one, two, three, four vessels on my three vessel view. Wow. Uh, when you see four vessels on a three vessel view, that means you're looking at a persistent left superior vena cava. Again, that isn't always associated with a congenital heart lesion, but it's often enough that whenever you make that observation, you want to recommend an echocardiogram. As we said, uh, what we want to observe is that the branching artery is on the end and that it is more anterior than the aorta. But what I, I've also said, I don't really care which branch I see. I could see the right PA, the left PA, or the ductus. But in fact, these three branches lie with, literally within millimeters of one another. If you look here, you'll see that the respiratory movement of the mother has caused us to go from this rib to the intercostal space, from the rib to the intercostal space. Now, how far of a distance is that on a fetus? And not very far, two, three millimeters at most. And yet, by those two, three millimeters of movement, I can see the right PA, right PA, right PA, left PA, left PA, left PA, and ductus, ductus, ductus. So I can see all three vessels within a couple millimeters of one another. So it's not beyond reason to get a look at all three vessels on your three vessel view. Again, I'm an enormous fan of cine clips. I can't tell you how enormous a fan I am. If you don't do cine clips, it is my opinion, you are trying to do obstetrical sonography with one hand tied behind your back. 